All right, we are on our last initial tutorial of FinRL. This is the video you've probably all been waiting for. We're going to test our model in our last video and compare it against a mean variance optimization as well as just a, you know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. So again, I'm not going to actually go through all these code cells because there would be a lot of just waiting for things to install and for things to train, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I've already installed everything we'll need for that, as you can see here. And the next thing I, I did was import some of the usual suspects here, like pandas and numpy and matplotlib to visualize the performance. Um, again, we'll be using Yahoo Downloader for our uh, comparative portfolios that we'll, that we'll see. Um, we'll be importing our agent, our environment, et cetera. Uh, I do need to, I did need to mount my Google drive for that because everything I've been doing up until this point has been saved on Google drive. Um, so you do need the train and trade data that we'll be using for the mean optimization portfolio. And if you haven't seen the other two previous videos, I highly, highly recommend watching those first. Otherwise, a lot of this um, pipeline or methodology code isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. But just as a quick update, um, one thing that the folks who wrote out this code um, and in their tutorials, they created a really good idea for if you're using multiple different models that you can just call them early up here and then everything below is a more or less a, a boilerplate way of just running the code and all you need to do is really just change what you're doing up here. So it'll make more sense as I go down. But for example, all I trained was an A2C model. So I'm just calling the pathway to where that model lives. And because it's set to true, this will load, but none of the other ones will load because it's all set to false. Now, um, if I had a PPO model, I would set this one to true as well. And then down here, this, as long as this path was correct, um, this would load as well. Now, if you're local, this will just, you won't, you know, it'll be a little bit more concise than writing out the whole path, obviously, but that's what I had to do since I'm in CoLab. Okay, now once you have that all loaded up, you do need to set up your stock dimension and your state space. And I've talked about this more in depth than the last one, but essentially you're setting up uh, how many stocks that you'll be trading. And you'll also be setting up your state space, which is the window in which your agent will uh, make decisions. From there, you can set up your settings, so to speak. Um, you want to do this to the way that you trained it. It'd be odd if you made a different sort of environment than the one that you trained on. It would obviously have some, you know, less than ideal effects on your agent. I also talked more in depth about this in our last video, so I'm just going to quickly brief, briefly go over it. Um, and then we just initialize our, our, our trading environment. In this instance, um, I've set the data frame to trade, which is the data that it is out of sample. So our agent has never seen this data before. Um, setting the turbulence threshold, as well as the setting the risk indicator column as VIX, which is in our data frame, that's what it's called. And then we're just passing through our environment quirks. Excellent. So our basically our environment is set up. And then the other thing that we're going to do is create two data frames here. One is the account value of the model, as well as the actions that the model took. And we just pass that through, or we call DRL agent, DRL prediction, pass through our agent or our model that we've tr already trained, pass through our environment. And as long as that's set to true, um, it will go ahead and execute. Otherwise, it will do nothing. So if you wanted to do this to your PPO, you would just copy, paste it below, and change every instance of ATC to PPO, right? Sort of like what we did up here. Excellent. So you're done. You're ready. It's, it's 
it's gone through it, the, it's hit its end, the agent has performed its function, so now we need something to compare it with. So one thing that we're gonna do, what's very cool about the tutorials in here, um, were that they, uh, I forget which one, you see there is a ton of different tutorials that they have, so I highly suggest you go through it, but um, they wrote out a function that already does the mean variance optimization I've done other videos on this topic, um, but yeah, it just goes to show that you can learn so much just by reading other people's code and, and trying to follow along with their resources because this is so much more concise and a beautifully written code than anything I, I ever did. So um, this will just help us process the data for the weight calculations. I'm not gonna go too much in depth with this because the main video is of course, our reinforcement learning agent, but just know that this processes the data and returns the weights. Um, and then this calculates the weights of the average return in the covariance matrix by passing through our, our data, right? So it'll do that. And then you we can call uh, process DF for MOV on the train and the trade. We put that into a NumPy array Excellent, we have that. And then we calculate the assets as an array. Of course, uh, a lot of this is just pre-configured in their package, which makes doing all this very easy. But then you get the average returns of the variance and the covariance. Uh, we set the position for printing results and uh, we display the mean returns in the variance co uh, covariance matrix, which looks like this. Um, don't worry if you don't know too much about this, but this is just modern portfolio theory where you're trying to calculate the highest returns uh, without um, essentially, without taking on any additional risk than you need to. It's called the efficient frontier. So we just get uh, uh, PYPFOPT, efficient frontier, import that, pass through everything that we've just created above, and we get our weights. And we apply those weights to the last price of our stock data. We get our initial portfolio here. Excellent. So then we test it on our out of sample data. Okay, excellent. Hopefully you're all following along. And then we get our MOV result. So this is the result of the weighted, um, uh, the weights that we have on each individual stock across time in our out of sample data. Okay, so this is the, cumulative um, returns that we've made on our portfolio you know that we're testing against our agent so the agent and the modern uh, the mean variance optimization portfolio are the same data the same stocks we're just testing which one does better the agent or the method of taking the average returns of the covariance matrix you know on the efficient frontier where we're trying to maximize the sharp but not trying to go over, but by not taking on any additional risk than we need to. Okay, there's a lot of math. I'm not very, um, I'm not obviously, I'm not a professional in this, but I am aware of what mean variance optimization is. Uh, I just want it to be clear on what we're looking at when we're looking at this. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I have other videos on the topic. Um, I don't want to get bogged down in that. Another, uh, another way we can test the performance of our our agent is by comparing it to an index so this is the dow jones index i don't have every stock on the dow jones index in the portfolio that we trained on so take this one with a grain of salt but it is you know it's similar to the way the rest of us compare our portfolio we sort of just look at these indexes and say well if it's performing well we're likely performing well or vice versa right so this would be if I just, you know, we're, we're just comparing it against the index, right? So we can use the Yahoo downloader that's a part of FinRL. Um, what's nice about the FinRL package is that you can just call this um, this here and it will automatically get every um, stock in that, in that uh, index in the Dow Jones. So you don't have to, uh, manually set a symbol equals a list of all of the stocks in the Dow Jones. It just knows what you're calling for if you just call this symbol here. 
of the Dow Jones. Okay, cool. And then what we're doing here is we're just taking the, the date and the close. We're taking the first day and we're merging it. Um, okay, great. Now we have our, our performance of the Dow Jones. Okay, cool. So now that we have the result, we'll set that equal to the account value. We set the index of the account value to the column uh, zero, right? If, if that is what we're using. So if we wanted to also compare the PPO, we would just write this line and change everything where it says A2C to PPO. And we would be essentially creating a data frame of our performance using A2C and the other models that we've trained. And then we merge the results with the data frame of the result on the outer. Um, the reason I'm going quickly through this is because this is all just setting it up so that we merge the results of the uh, all the different data frames that we've just set up. So we just want to isolate just the performance value of the um, of our of our agent, right? That we've that we've just tested on our out of sample data here, and we're creating a new data frame. And if we're using the A2C, which we are, the result will equal the merge of our data frame result A2C, which we've initialized way up here. Um, that way we can just get the account, the, the result values, the account values of that, right? It'll make merging the two, all the three different data frames much easier if we do this, uh, which we'll do right here. So we're going to get our result. We'll merge it with our, um, our mean variance optimization results. And then we'll, res we'll merge it again with the Dow Jones. And when we look at our result values, this is what we get. OK, so the reason I rushed all through that is because it can get complicated if we start to overthink things. But visualizing what it is that we're looking at makes it a lot easier. So we're just trying to compare the performant value of each of our different portfolios that we've back tested on our out of out of sample data. OK, so you can see here it's all starting off in the same place. And then the next day uh, we have different weights for our value on our efficient frontier. So that this is what we would do if we were following the mean variance portfolio. Um, this is the value performance that we would have if we just did nothing and we just took the close of the Dow Jones index. And then this is the result performance of our A2C model. Okay, so all we're trying to do is compare the result performance day by day, day by day trading day um, on our out of date, out of out of sample dates and values. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then we just we just uh, we just plot it, right? We just call our matplotlib, create a figure, plot it. The blue line is our agent, so this is how well our agent did across time. The orange line is our mean variance um, portfolio optimized, um, you know how well that did across time, and then the green is just the index. So you can see here that we're kind of all landing in the same place. Um, very, and sort of the first thing that strikes me is that the agent doesn't actually perform much better than the close or the mean variance. Um, sorry, the close meaning the Dow Jones index doesn't actually perform all that well for like uh, almost a year, more than a year. And then it has a slight advantage here dips back below the mean variance, right? So one would probably look at this and say, well, I am more ahead. I'm outperforming the market and the agent if I just follow along with the modern portfolio theory of mean variance. Um, so this is probably the one I would take. But then at the very end here, you see that the agent seems to be performing well. But it's really up to someone else to discuss whether or not they um, would or decide whether or not their agent is performing at all better than, than you know, to actually put it in production. I wouldn't, based on this graph, just because it looks like the agent doesn't do much better than just other methods. And the whole point of creating an agent is so that it can 
do what we humans cannot, which is make consistent calculations on the market and outperform us in the game called uh, making money. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of work to do here. And we're just looking at the A2C. So you would follow this sort of same pattern or boilerplate method if you had PPO, um, you know, if you had any of the other models listed just so you could see the performance of each one against the mean variance in the index. So there's a lot of a lot to be learned from this. Um, and certainly I think it's easier to understand than, you know, just trying to stitch together a bunch of different packages to see the same type of results here. Um, I know there was, at least for me too, looking at the results page on using stable baselines and gym open trading, I, it was really hard for me to understand what exactly was going on. It was constantly losing money. It would only make buy trades at times. So I was just, I didn't know what I was really doing. It was a lot harder to see exactly, um, you know, how to optimize the agent to perform at least competently with the other methods of portfolio optimization. And this is a very basic, I mean, I just followed what they did here in one of their portfolio and one of their tutorials. And already we're seeing much, much better results um, than we were stitching together stable baselines and open open trading, open AI and, and gym any trading and all that, all that good stuff too. So highly, highly recommend FinRL. Um, apologies if you wanted me to spend more time on, you know, the mean variance. Um, and going over this code, I didn't want to get bogged down in it because I just wanted to show you the power of the, you know, the package of FinRL and how you can uh, really create an agent that does comparatively well with the other, other methods of portfolio optimization. I'm going to leave it off here. I am definitely going to make other videos using FinRL. It seems like you guys really enjoy reinforcement learning. So I'll just try to try to learn it and try to get better at it and uh, sort of share the results along the way. Um, until then, I will. this concludes our FinRL series. Um, if I work on anything else, I will certainly share it. And until then, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.